You can sit there. I have uh, Daniel just come back here. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. Hi. an amazing service by the way from you know the first one it's gonna be amazing so you're gonna see a lot of music people and and, and like more instruments so uh, this is Trish Coleman oh but I said her like right uh, she's a guitar student of mine and we're just gonna perform some songs that you know that we want to show and then we're gonna perform with the quartet we and all this before the service starts so <laughs> The first piece is called Bravo, and it's a French folk song. I hope they refilled your water glasses. Can you check those? One on the lectern, one on the lectern, and one where I sit. But I have about no water. But the one on the pulpit is important that they will quit. When I write the preacher, it's gone. There's a lady coughing. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Usually she brings That's fine. Look, there's, there's a glass here, I think. There's a glass here. Okay. Yeah, and they put it back. This second piece is called Todos a Mirar. Rest of your residual effect. And that's the one that says laugh. And you just put it down. Don't want to hear your secrets. I did tell them. Laugh. Laugh. Yeah, laugh. All the way down. Thank you. There you go. Okay, so. Um, this, they mic this a little. You know, the guitar still doesn't have big, you know, sound, so we have to put a lot of microphone. Uh, so it's called Todos a Mirar, and this is a, an anonymous song. Um, but the, the, the title is Everybody Look At, Let's Look At, or Let's Everybody Look.
she will come back again uh, for offertory. <laughs> I got one more to go. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Oh, wow. oh, well, oh, well, gonna... oh, yeah. oh, you so want to say something? One more, you want to introduce? Piece. Yeah, one more piece before yeah. we start. Oh, one more piece. Oh, I'm... oh my goodness. I know. It would just, Stepping you know... on your bow. <laughs> yeah, sorry. We're taking time, I guess. I, I apologize. Know. I will not step on your bow. I will go back to nap. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to those who are at home and welcome to those who are in the church. We'll do even a better one. We'll try to play this much faster. Uh, so uh, this is Cesar, Caroline, Daniel. We, we're part of the octet, but you know, we, uh, now we're doing it as a quartet. And we decided to play a very known piece called Aina Kleina Nachmusik, uh, which is by Mozart. You will recognize it. We, you know, we play it all the time, so we're going to pretend to like it again. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, hopefully you enjoy it. We're going to play the first movement, and then after the service, we're going to play the last movement. And we'll see how fast we can play this. I don't want the pictures to be uh, upset with us. Thank you. 
Wonderful. Good morning. Welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for that, that beautiful prelude. Uh, Hoel, thank you too. We welcome, uh, we welcome, I'll have a special a little announcement later on. We'll talk, we'll talk a little bit about this. So welcome to those of you who are at home. We welcome uh, Bishop San, who's with us today, uh, who will be our celebrant and preacher. We also welcome back our Rector Emeritus. Uh, Father Sam is back from the wilds of Maine with uh, the wonderful Judy, so we welcome our emeritus back. The bishop asked where the emeritus was today, so, Sam, at 8 o'clock, so, but the emeritus is here. So a little story before I, I begin. I have no shame to tell this in front of the bishop. Uh, and so there's a you, you, fire and brimstone preachers, right? You've heard of them or you, you know about fire and brimstone preachers, you know. So this in this little church, this fire and brimstone preacher was telling everybody in the congregation, if you don't repent and turn from your ways, you're going to go to hell. This whole congregation is going to go to hell. He went on and on for about 45 minutes just saying this congregation is going to go to hell if they don't repent and turn from their ways. Well, there's a guy sort of sitting where Scott is and laughing hysterically. Every time he said this congregation is going to go to hell, he's laughing hysterically. So this goes on for 45 minutes that this congregation is going to go to hell. Finally, the pastor goes up to the fellow who's sitting there laughing and he said, why are you laughing? He said, I'm not a member of your congregation. <laughs> amen and amen. Let's stand and sing our opening hymn this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. God's peace and love remain with you now and forevermore. It is great to be here on this beautiful morning to share worship with you and to receive and confirm members to the family of the Episcopal Church. Um, our service begins on page four of the service bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in the God's to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray the collect for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. O oh God, did you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we running to obtain your promises may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. <clears throat> to Jesus Christ our Lord, who lived and reigned with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, ever and ever. Amen. The College for the Diocese of Easton, gracious God, through the movement of your Holy Spirit. You and each the Church of Maryland, strengthen us in inviting and welcoming faith community, transformed by the love, hospitality, and reconciling truth of Jesus. Receive our worship, praise and thanksgiving, nurture and sustain our life and faith, and help us to be a grateful people of your grace upon grace, through Jesus Christ, Lord, Lord. Amen. I'll be seated for the readings from God's holy word. Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of King Zedekiah of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. At that time, the army of the king of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem, and the prophet Jeremiah was confined in the court of the guard that was in the palace of the king of Judah, where King Zedekiah and Judah had confined him. Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came to me. Hanamel, son of your uncle Shalom, is going to come to, to you and say, Buy my field that is at Ananoth, for the right of redemption by purchase is yours. Then my cousin Hanamel came to me in the court of the guard in accordance with the word of the Lord and said to me, Buy my field that is at Ananoth, in the land of Benjamin, for the right of possession and redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. And I bought the field at Ananoth from my cousin Hanamel, and weighed out the money to him, 17 shekels of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, got witnesses, and weighed the money on scales. Then I took the sealed deed of purchase, containing the terms and conditions, and the open copy, and I gave the deed of purchase to Baruch, son of Neriah, son of Messiah, in the presence of my cousin Hanamel, in the presence of the witnesses who signed the deed of purchase, and in the presence of all the Judeans who were sitting in the court of the guard. In their presence, I charged Baruch, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these deeds, both the sealed deed of purchase and the open deed, and put them in an earthenware jar, in order that they may last for a long time. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is, is Psalm 91, verses 1 to 6 and 14 to 16. We will say Psalm 91 responsibly by half verse. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold. My God, you are my trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter. And he shall cover you with his pinions, and you shall find refuge under his wings. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the terror that flies by day, of the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor of the sickness that lays waste at day. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him on high. With long life will I satisfy him. And show him my salvation. Our second reading today is from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. Of course, 
there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, it is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those in the present age who are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to be, do good, to be rich in good works, generous, ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Lord, 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 Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate, a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades, where he was being tormented. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and sent Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus, in like manner, evil things. 
but now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And so I have to do the canonical thing. 
which is to ask the vestry to pass a motion and John to write me a letter um, stating that blah 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 blah, all this stuff. Uh, because I need to keep a paper trail in case any of the mischief makers around would want to come and challenge my decision. So I've done so and I said to John, as long as I'm the bishop here, which may be next five years, and the first three things you are, you are, you are, you are okay, you're not senile, um, you are, you are someone they could live with, and then um, you'll have my permission to do that. So I have five years more before I begin my own process of transition. I'm going to be 65 next Thursday, and um, but I'm not going to go to 72. I don't have the energy. I've, for 41 years, I've been, I have been cleaning up people's mess all over the world by the grace of God. And my body is tired. And my spirit is strong, but the flesh is weak. And, um, and so as long as I'm the bishop here, this is the next five years, you could rest assured that you, you will remain here one the people are in favor of you. I don't want him to come every year and say, Oh, I think the bishop is going to win you. No, no, no. I told him, go there and make Jesus look good. <laughs> don't worry, I'm here and not to pack. To pack all those boxes, empty boxes in the garage, defer all of that, go home and, and you all do God's work. And so, you have the very next five years that he's become. Eventually, have to do an annual, and he'll have to write the annual letter. So I stick it in the file. <laughs> Couple myself about after. I don't have that. So I'm happy to do that because um, I know how tough it was for you to find a priest when Mr. Emeritus decided that he is now going to invoke 872 pro provider. Or uh, were you 872, John? Um, Sam? You know? But no. you're, you're 20 years you spent here, right? Huh? Oh yeah, it's time for you to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for you to become the emeritus, <laughs> the wise seer of the, of the parish. Um, get a new one. And um, so, so uh, I, think, um, uh, I think everyone is happy with that decision. And, um, and I think John in the sunset, John. Same car. Same car. <laughs> Different proof of same car. I know how we're going to work that out. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm happy for all you do, to be honest. I'm glad, thankful we are coming out of this pandemic. It's not gone, it's still there. Uh, however, we know how to live with it and prosper. Um, please be careful. Please follow the protocol if you don't feel well. Please be cautious. Please. Please advocate for yourself and for others. Um, please don't let it fear you anymore because we have learned how to live with this danger among us. This devil among us, we have learned how to live with it. Be vaccinated if your doctor advises you so to do and do it because we want to have you around us as long as God will have you around. Um, I know there's another booster out. I'm waiting to get my third booster, uh, which I'm going to go and see when, how many months have to elapse before you are considered a candidate for the third booster. I have to investigate that a little bit and then make an appointment, my wife and I. Because I, I, I deal with members of this diocese. Um, from north to south, east to west, and I need to be, I've always thought to be very, very accountable and a good steward and responsible. If I'm going to be among you, I might as well be safe among you. Uh, and, uh, but you know, you have to wait a certain time to elapse from your last booster to this one. So I'm going to investigate that, and as soon as, it's, if it says that 
I'm within that time frame that I can go ahead and have it. Both my wife and I are going to have it. Because we believe in keeping everyone safe and us ourselves safe as well. Thank you very much for your support of the diocese. We have survived COVID. The 2023 is going to be a tough year, budget wise. I told the diocese, and I mentioned it to you all when I was here with the occasion that I wasn't worried about 2020. I wasn't worried about 2021 because we got a PPP loan and people re our people remain faithful. I wasn't worried about 2022, but I was concerned about 2023. I didn't bargain for the stock market, the investment, the inflation. I, I, didn't, I didn't see that coming. But my financial team mentioned that it, is, it will come. Because we are giving out all these stimulus money and all this unemployment um, money on a regular basis, uh, which is good, which is great, but somebody got to pay for it. Right? We borrowed it from China. <laughs> and China requires payback with interest. It's like a credit card, you know? We, we tap it or we pull it <laughs> or we push it. <laughs> Either way, the money that swept over that belongs to somebody else. You're just borrowing the money. Or if it's an interest. I have a credit card, American Express, I can say, 25% interest rate. I keep that sure. deal. <laughs> <laughs> I only use you when I need, because what happens does is that it gives you greater protection when you're traveling overseas and all that stuff. So I keep that just for emergency because of the protection, the level of limit that they allow you. But it's zero. <laughs> because why? We got to pay it back. You know what it is to pay 25% interest? It's a lot of money. It's a quarter of your income. So the point is that now that we have to pay back, we are seeing the ramifications of the stimulus check. We put it in our pocket, or some of us expand our home, change our roofs, and oh, look, we're fine. But somebody got to pay it back. Time for us to pay it back. So when you Spreading over inflation, remember all of us are part of that, right? Because we have to put it there. We have to put it there. And also, the war in Ukraine, which we all support, what a fabulous group of faithful people defending their homeland, and what will happen. Russia would do what they're doing, and that is either shut off the pipeline that, that supplies gas to the whole of Europe and other places and use it as a political weapon and so the price of oil goes up. These things have consequences. We are living in a global world. It has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with common sense and understanding the, 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 the trickle down effect. So what we do People of conscience, we tighten our bootstraps and we act accordingly because we want to support Ukraine in defending their homeland. Alright? So we need to look at all this global stuff, how they affect us in our daily routine and realize that it's not an isolated to the USA. I was in the Bahamas where I come from, my daughter lived there with his <coughs> son and two grandson. My wife and I were there um, the other day um, for, to, see, to visit them. They pay $7 for gallon for gas. US dollars, US dollars. And their traffic is chucked down. They sit in their car and got to turn the air conditioner off because they go to the Bahamas, Bahamas for sun, sea and sun. So with sun comes heat, right? 
So they consume more gas, so that the people there have to spend $7 a gallon per gallon. In England, out there for Lambeth, it's 3.46 pounds, 3 pounds 46 pence for a liter of gas. How many liters make a gallon? Huh? Huh? Four liters? Huh? Three point seven. We are terrible metrics, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so just imagine you calculate if one liter is three pound four six pence, three pound four six pence, and four liters make a gallon. Calculate what the price of a gallon. It blows your mind, right? So we need to understand this simple maths and understand we have to therefore act <coughs> and appropriate our lives to accommodate these fluctuating times. <coughs> and this season of unpredictability. I'm not a financial person, but I try to understand what I'm doing. And that's the truth. So when we quibble about things, we need to remember that, um, that sometimes we may be hard. It's not meant to hurt us, it's meant to help others. The pandemic was tough on all of us. And both governments, both governments really did a good job in trying to supply, protect, and give us stimulus checks to help um, deal with the crisis. Uh, but of course, both governments had to borrow it from another place and be paying it back right now. Didn't realize that, eh? Well, that's how things go. We, we sometimes forget the source of what we, where we get stuff from and the responsibility we have in paying it back. So thank you very much for all you do. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you, my friend, for bringing your three colleagues and giving. Was that Mozart? Mozart. Mozart. I thought so. I love that when everyone comes and they tell it. Um, <coughs> I love to hear it. It's so refreshing, <laughs> and it's so. And you all do a good job. You compete with the best. Thank you. Thank you. Is that so? <laughs> <laughs> I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The power of Lazarus <coughs> and dies by the rich man picks up from the power of the unjust steward last week. Both deal with finance and money. And both deal with one with the unfortunate misuse of wealth. They are just showed was exploiting the job he had. He lacked accountability. He lacked trust. He was ultra dishonest. But he was a scam artist. In order to cover his, his mess, he decided to do a further misappropriation. He cooked the books, remember? He had his hand in the cookie jar with him. And then he ended up having to cover his wrong deeds by doing another wrong deed, which was to get his creditors to adjust their bills, which really was wrong. He pocketed the money for himself, but he saved his skin. And Jesus commended him, remember? The question would be, did Jesus commend dishonesty? Did Jesus commend dishonesty last Sunday? The answer is no. Read down the line. That's, I call it, the classic sarcastic statement of Jesus. You know what sarcasm is, right? That was classic sarcasm. One of Jesus' smiley moments. 
When he makes a statement and smiles about it, his sarcasm, he gives us the message in the latter half of that text, how we are to be accountable. But today, he picks up on that, on that parable by saying, talking about these two individuals, <clears throat> Dad and Lazarus. One was wealthy, lived sumptuously, dressed in purple robes. I'm not wealthy though, but I'm required to wear this. <clears throat> this, is, this is the robe of royalty. And they say Bishop is, is royal. But the only difference is that Bishop is a, is a poverty stricken royalty. Uh, and so, anyway. Um, so, and the other guy sat at his gate waiting for the crumbs off of the master's table. Remember that? Crumbs, meaning that what left was left over. And even the servants ate better than him. And the servants in anybody's household in those days was the worst denominator in the human in the human totem pole. They ate bread better than this person. But then that comes. The inevitability of life happens. And death is the equalizer. Whether you're rich, whether you're poor, we die. It's an inescapable part of the human phenomenon. We die. And that's where judgment begins. So, the rich man, we all know, went to hell. Hades. Lazarus went to heaven. So, one enjoyed life in this world. The other struggled in this world. But in after life, it matters most because that's eternity. The poor beggar is having a more hopeful time than the wealthy person. So much so that the wealthy person is now begging the beggar who is at his door for help through Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, yes, if Lazarus could just dip the tip of his finger and put it on my tongue to cool, to cool my body, I'll be thankful. And you know what Jesus said? Don't work like that. There's a chasm between heaven and hell. You could see what's happening in heaven. But heaven doesn't see what's happening in hell. Thank God for that. And, and Jesus said it can't happen. And why? Because had Lazarus had the dies been granted that request from, from to, and had Lazarus placed the tip of his finger dipped in water in on the town of the of dies or the rich man, the rich man would have catapulted into heaven. He would have gone to heaven. Because he would have received from Lazarus the water of life-given spirit. The water of life-given spirit he would have received by that tip. That's why Jesus said, hold on there. It doesn't work that way. You remember when you had good life? And you remember Lazarus at your gate? You paid no attention to him. You thought life was always going to be like that. And Lazarus was not my concern. However, when the great equalizer struck, named death, you're judged by the standard of God, not by the standard of the world. In this world, you are judged by the standard of the world. And the poor are regarded as chattels by the wealthy. In heaven, you are not judged by wealth. You are judged by your life with Jesus Christ. And those wonderful folks there, they will tell you how beautiful heaven is. And so what happened? Lazarus... Work out 
in this world, we are asked the question, which competency do we live by in this world? What is our, the, our competency in this world? That is the by the competency of wealth and position and privileges. And he abused that which was given to him by God. That's why Paul so painstakingly illustrates in the epistle what the virtues of a Christian should be and how wealth could be the cause of a lot of evil. If we don't know how to use wealth, we could destroy our souls. That's what Paul is saying. There's nothing wrong being wealthy. There's nothing wrong being wrong making money. Make all you can. Heck, if the devil people live in Palestine, why can't you people live in there, right? If the devil people have millions of dollars in their investment, why can't Jesus people have them? Be honest. Why can't they? God is not criticizing well. God is emphasizing that when we have wealth, we use it responsibly so that not only we benefit as a, as a wealthy person, but others in a triple double effect to that use of wealth. And therefore, what Paul is saying that we must have, we must understand the stewardship of wealth that rises beyond me, the wealthy person, into an embed into the life of the community, into the life of other people. We have got to understand what it means to share. The wealthier we are, the more we share. Because why? They all come from God anyhow. And when we live the commands of God, which is to share what you receive from God, then we're actually living the life of the gospel. And what you receive will be blessed. That's what Paul is saying. And Ladai received a lot, the rich man didn't share. We saw what happened. So the question I want to ask you this morning, which competency do you work from? Is there a competency of maintenance? Maintenance, you get it, you use it, you preserve it, you worship it. Is the competency of law? Is the competency of the desire of this world? <clears throat> But Jesus says, be in the world, but not of the world. Is it a competency of maintenance, which is of the world, which is of law? You know what law is? Law ensures that the status quo is maintained and preserved. When I was elected to the diocese, it was a, it is clearly stated by the diocese. There were some issues in the diocese. You weren't here. They made a lot of, claim a lot of issues. And that's fine. I think they name it. They had a church name it and bless them for that. And so they left me with the intention of giving a new narrative to this old story that's failing them. Because they're operating from the competency of maintenance, which is about law, regulation, Holding fast to what the unproduct unproductive thing. But I chose to work on the competency of faith, mission, and spirituality, which is of God. And guess what's happening? It is changing the narrative of the diocese. Because I've centered this diocese in Jesus Christ and named it that this is going to be a, a diocese centered in Jesus Christ. Not ruled by law, but ruled by grace. So the question is, what competency do you work from? Is it maintenance, which is about law and, and, and traditionalism and dogmatism, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result? Or competency of faith, your belief in God, that no matter what, God will bless you. Like dives, I'm last with the story. Competency of vision. Mission is serving others, caring for God's people. Remember that you are not the be-all and end-all of the world. That it's in you. 
you live in Ubuntu, says Desmond Tutu. I am in you, and you are in me. And me in you, and you in me, means that the world is not an isolated island. It is a communal island, where everybody matters, when everybody is cared for. That's the competency of mission. Teaching people the faith. Telling them about Jesus. Disturbing them into the faith that we did to Chris and Amanda this morning and we'll be doing it to others. And spirituality is, the competency of spirituality is knowing Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Being formed in Jesus Christ who never dies, who conquers death. And so, spirituality means form for Christ. And so you read your Bible, you live in community, serve your church, you receive the sacrament at the altar, you put your priest right when it goes wrong. <laughs> but this guy is so boring, he doesn't go wrong. <laughs> and boring is good. Boring is good. And you serve God. That's spiritual, that's the competency that you live into. Because it transforms human being into divine being. So I ask you, which competency was Lazarus living into? Which of the three, which of the competencies was Lazarus living into? You were living into the competency of of faith in God, that I may have problems in this world, but I'm going to be alright with Jesus. Mission. I, I may not get a dime in this world, but I'll be in, a, in the land of abundance. Spiritually, <clears throat> I know Jesus, and He promised me that He will be with me even to the end of the times. Not me, goodness, which is about me in this world, and nothing else. Christians are to live from the competency of faith, mission, and spirituality. Non-Christians or unbelievers live from the, from the competency of maintenance, which is deadly, lethal, it goes nowhere. So that's the choice that all of us need to make. Which competency do we want to live out of? Make sense? You have made your choice. That's why you're here. Am I right? Yes. And the choice you made is that I want to live out of the competency of faith, mission, and spirituality. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Fishing like a guy, right? <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Get me charismatic now. <laughs> and so, my beloved. When you think about Lazarus and Dives, remember the competency the two of them were living out of. One maintaining wealth, prosperity, good company, consciously having parties every night, all the other of this world. <coughs> Lazarus, on the other hand, was living out of the competency of faith, believing God, that I may have a tough life right now, but I'm going to stay with God because God has promised me eternal life. With far supersedes the maintenance competency and also mission and spirituality. I am living in Jesus Christ. I'm going to come to church. The pandemic is, is, is dragging off. I can get back and regather in my church, receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior in the sacrament of the altar. Hear the word of God. Be with my family, believers. And the competency I live in will continue to be strengthened until God calls me home. And I don't have to wonder where I'm going. Because why? I've been living into the competency of what Jesus guided Lazarus to live into. May God bless you. I hope you live into the competency God has created you to live into. Amen. <laughs>
Let me invite our candidates, please. Sure. Let's see. I present Vicki Tillman for conference confirmation and Mary Beth and Tom Kenny for reception. Wow, this is wow. Oh my God, Tom. I see they've got the competency right. That's right. <laughs> uh, we need to do your help, right? Yep. All right, um, this is this is so in which we welcome you into the Discord Church by confirmation, laying on of hands, and by reception, receiving you from the other community of faith you may have lived into. And um, so there's a service of reception, which is in the prayer book here. That is great. Page five. The candidate will now be presented. Bishop, I present Vicki Tillman for confirmation. I present Mary Beth and Tom Kenny for reception into our parish. Vicki, Tom, and Mary Beth, do you announce your, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. Yes. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. And with God's grace, I will follow him as our Savior and Lord. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. We will. Shall we stand, please, as we, as we may? If you're able to stand, please stand. If not, you may remain seated. Let us join those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own Baptist love covenant. Do you believe in God? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ. His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. In his sentence, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim my word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all persons and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our Grant the Lord that all who are baptized in the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lived and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sitting of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to yourself. Renew these serve your servant the covenant you made with them as their baptism. Send them forward in the power of that spirit to perform the service you set before them through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now, uh, congregation may be seated if you wish.
sure, but you want to turn this up a little bit. It's off. Is his? Is it off? You're muted. Is I'm it? muted. Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. You have a strong voice. I didn't notice. <laughs> it's a. It's That's reaffirming. It's a sin to mute the bishop. <laughs> no, it's not a sin. It's good sometimes to mute him. He talks too much. <laughs> All right. Um, I tell you what. Um, the protocol is, I will lay my hands on you, and you, and you. There are different prayers to you. And I'll, then I'll anoint you with this oil. Now, this oil is chrism. It is the oil from olive, olive oil mixed with a lot of stuff. That smells good. But this is dry a little bit. That's on the other side. And it is always used in the Old Testament and in the New Testament to anoint kings and create, King Charles will be anointed with oil when you, when you do the enthronement, you'll see. Anoint kings and anoint prophets and messengers of God. It's a sign of the Holy Spirit. I give, I'm going to give you an assignment in 1 Samuel, right? Chapter 16, you'll find that, that um, David was anointed with the oil by Samuel, and the Spirit of God rested upon David. And even though he went back and did his shepherding, his young, it never left him until God was ready for him at age 40 to come back and board and be the king. So you will, if you begin to speak in tongues, don't bother. <laughs> it, it's one of the consequences of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, we wouldn't throw you out of the building. We'll just lift God up and, and, and try to comfort you. Um, but we'll do up the proper thing. Um, so that's, that's kind of, so I just want to put, make you aware uh, it's okay for me to lay my hands on you. Um, could I borrow the sanitizer, please? The sanitizer. No, it's on the left. We're still living in pandemic. <laughs> so we still have to um, um, be very protocolish. <clears throat> this will sport out quickly, so. <laughs> Good. And the clock. Power. Because I don't want, I don't want you to be anointed with sanitizer. I want you to be anointed with oil. So I need to wash my hands. Hence my hand. I didn't do it this morning because I just got like everybody else forgetting the protocol. And I pray to Jesus for forgiveness. Vicky, could you please come here? <clears throat> Thank you, O Lord, your servant Vicky, with your Holy Spirit, empower her for your service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. Vicky, receive the seal of the Spirit, the promised gift of the Father. Amen. Amen. Welcome home, my sister. <laughs> we love having you. You belong here. And yeah. Okay. Mary Beth. Mary Beth, we recognize you as a member of the one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. And we receive you into the fellowship of this communion in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Mary Beth. Receive the seal of the Spirit, the promised gift of the Father. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Welcome home. You belong here. Tom. Tom, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Tom, receive the seal of the Spirit, the promised gift of the Father. Amen. Tom, ordinarily, um, we don't anoint 
those who received, we assume that they were received and anointed over there. And you from where? Methodist? Catholic. Catholic. You're from? Catholic. Yeah, but I don't take that chance. I try to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fix it. If they missed it, I fix it. <laughs> let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them, and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. 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 Could you please turn around? Uh, Vicky, where are you coming from? Uh, Nandi Nams. Nandi yeah. Well, you got the Dinams now. I do. <laughs> You're no longer, a, what do I should say, a nominal member. You are a, you are a committed, faithful member. Welcome home, all of you. Let's welcome our new teacher. And we have some gifts for you all. Let's receive your, your gifts. Let's make it official, Tom and Be Mary Beth and Vicky. Does Mary Beth uh, say, oh, where's Mary Beth's certificate? We'll find it. It's in the back. Okay. Uh, so, um, no, Mary Beth is, is with Vicky's. Oh, oh, I gave her two. Oh, I'm sorry. I knew it. I remember signing them. I remember signing them. Here, I'll do it. Yeah, um, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. Welcome on board. Welcome on board. Welcome on board. That's peace. That's peace. We don't play the Vivaldi. Peace. 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 You may be seated. Well, Carol, get me that little doggy up there. So a couple of things uh, before we, we move on in the service. Everyone is invited back to the, to the, to the parish hall. Be quiet. Uh, everyone's invited back to the parish hall for a reception. There's lots of food there, um, coffee, things to, things to drink, lemonade and tea. The bishop will be there if you'd like to uh, speak with him or have questions for him. Uh, Bishop, we have so many wonderful ministries here in the, in the church. Uh, Vicki uh, and Diane are here, and, and they represent our, our sacred ground cohorts. So we have a sacred ground. Uh, Carol from uh, our EFM ministry okay. it is also here. We have a green team that works with the interfaith partners of the Chesapeake. Uh, for God's creation. And, uh, so we have um, uh, Julie Waterhouse and, and Rick Waterhouse and George Kaplan who are here. So we have just such a wonderful different ministries of serving God uh, in, in his church and his kingdom here. And uh, we're, we're very thankful for the diverse groups that we have here. So I wanted you to be aware of that. So Thank it's you. important. Okay, good. Do we have, oh, this, next week. Blessing of the animals, right? We're going to do it outside. We're going to have what we call mass on the grass. Uh, mass on the grass outside, weather permitting. If uh, it's raining, we'll be inside in the, in the parish hall. So bring your dog, bring your iguana, bring your um, cat. <laughs> cat. <laughs> cat. Bring your cat uh, in the cage. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but uh, we would love to bless all of your, uh, your animals. Uh, two services, 8 and 10. Uh, for those of you who are uh, at home, we will not be able to video this service. The, bringing the equipment outside is just much too much for us right now. So it'll be outside, uh, weather permitting, or inside in the parish hall. And uh, I think, uh, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries here? Rich. Catch. <laughs> Not cruel. Yesterday. Yesterday was your birthday. Yeah. Good, good. Did she make you a cake? I did. She did? For a scratch cake. Yeah. 
Wow, it was a big number. <laughs> oh, all right. Lord, we thank you for, for Rich, for his leadership and his family, for all that he does for, for us here at, at our church and our parish family. We thank you for the uh, volunteerism that he does with, with others in the recovery community. We thank you for so much that he does, and, and he does it with uh, a joyful smile and, and grace. We ask you to bless him as he celebrates another birthday and watch over him always. In Jesus' name we pray and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you. Remain with you always. Amen. Good. All righty. Good. Jill, you've got a birthday? Oh, I'm just going to bless every Holly Yale. Uh, I'll, I'll just bless bless that whole, bless that whole row back there. Um, yeah, yeah, and who's, who's back there? Noah, Simon back there? Who else is back there? Who, who, do, who do we miss? Okay. Holy okay. Father, we ask your blessing upon this family, Lord. Upon the, this marriage, too, is just so wonderful. She looks beautiful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, we ask you to be with them and watch over them. We, we thank you, Lord that they're here. We thank you that they're part of this church community, that they come and they worship and they, they, they just have a, a good time here. We just love seeing the young people. We ask you to bless everyone with birthdays and anniversaries and marriages. We ask all of this in Jesus' name and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon your entire family. Remain with you always. Amen. Good. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice for God. Oh, we will also be doing intention today. Uh, Bishop uh, will, uh, will take the uh, communion uh, host, and he will dip it into the wine that our chalice bearer, Eucharistic minister, is holding, and then he will offer it to you. I know we've got a couple of people here are, are gluten-free, and so we have gluten-free that, uh, that are available also. So everyone is invited to come forward for communion. Um, before we proceed with the Eucharist, I just want to say, um, don't be nervous if I think, because as the bishop, there's a level of responsibility that is higher than everybody else. It shouldn't be, but then expectations. And it's unadvisable for everybody to think in the same cup. It's not sanitary, it's not wise, it's unadvisable. Um, to keep you safe, I want to practice safe safe and healthy practice. So I sanitize my hand, I, I, or I wash it, and I will in think, because with everybody in thinking in the same cup, it's not healthy. And, um, and, and as the bishop, I better practice what is healthy. And when, when I go, then I hope you continue it. If not, well, we'll see. Um, I have a cross here that I'm wearing, and there's a story behind it. Um, and I say it now because people, after communion, people go off and they miss the story. Now this was, this, it was weaved with beads by a First Nation archdeacon and her team in Upper Manitoba, where the First Nation in Canada re reside. And um, the Bishop of, Mani of Brandon in Upper Manitoba, um, Bishop William Cliff, was in my Bible study group on Zoom for Lambeth Bishops. A whole year we met from April of 21 right on to, to January, December of 2021. 20, then we met again from, for another three months. So we had the bishop had two years of conversation on Zoom prior to Lambert in this, this, this um, July hour was gone. And we heard the story about the children of First Nation parents that were taken from their parents by the church and the government and placed in these um, boarding schools because they are told by the Anglo that their culture was not of God. And Anglo culture was of God. 
and so to indoctrinate them into the Anglo culture, they decided to go from small. So they removed these children and took them away from their parents, and the parents never saw their children again. You got a little boy here, so listen to this story. That they were not worthy of being a creature of God. And many of the children died in the boarding schools. Some of them were, were either beaten by the nuns or by church officials running the schools, and they were buried in mass graves, unmarked mass graves. And their parents did not know where their kids were because they were taken away from Listen to this, my friend, and listen, look, look at your two children there. And think about that happening to you. And now they are beginning to unearth all of these mass graves with these First Nation children because they felt that we call them in, in the States. They, they are in the States as well. It so happened that the Canada has been highlighted. And so we had a testimony from one of the survivors of that genocide at Lambeth, one of the, a woman testified. And so Bishop, Bishop Bill brought to his Bible study class on Zoom and gave to all of us bishops who were in his class one of these. The Pope went there in, in, in August to apologize on behalf of the Roman Catholic Church. The Archbishop Canterbury, Justin Welby, went there to apologize on behalf of the Anglican Church. And he has one of these because if you look at his if you look at his presentations at Lambeth, you'd see him wearing one of this, because he was given this. And so I was given one, along with a few other the bishops who were in, in his Bible study group, and told the story. And I've decided that in order to commemorate that gruesome period in our church's history, I will wear this gift as a memento of the lives of those children who were killed, that were lost, and for the parents who suffered the cruelty of knowing their children did not, were taken away from them just because they were different. They were not white. And therefore the children didn't have the proper soul. And people thought that they could give them the proper soul in the name of God. We all know that we all create in the image and likeness of God. So everyone's soul is equal to the other. And everyone is precious like the other. And so I'm going to be wearing this. I've been wearing this since I came back from Lambeth at my visitation. And I've been, I'm telling the story because it is powerful. I cried last week when I was telling it because I remember that I had a child uh, in 1985, she died, and I know how painful it was. That's 35 years ago, I think, was it, or more? 37. Huh? Sorry, 37. Yeah. Any of you have, any of you have a child that died? Yeah. You know what it is. And so I, I, I broke down when I was telling this story because I, I thought about my own child that died 37 years ago. And the doctor did not tell me that the child was in crisis because the doctor felt that the child was not important. So I didn't even baptize my own child before she died. Because I could have done that. But the doctor took a decision to feel that he is with God and the parents didn't need to know. So I know what it is to lose a child. May their soul rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen.
praise and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name I pray. Because in Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we pray to join our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim your glorious name. love you made us to yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arm upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ is again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him, Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. By him 
and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now that our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread and are made to drink of the same cup. gifts of God for the people of God, takes them in remembrance that Christ died for us, made on him in our hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body and blood of Christ given for me. The body and blood of Christ given for me. Deserve your body and soul into the last. Body and blood of Christ given for you. 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 Body and blood of Christ given for you.
Oh, Simon. Let me give him one. Given for you, what and blood of Christ given for you. They receive. They don't. They don't receive. The Lord God Almighty bless you, my child, and the Holy Spirit of you. May the Lord God Almighty bless you, my child, and the Holy Spirit of you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'd like to commend the director for doing the ablution the way he did it, that is consume the cha from the chalice at the end of the service, because that's the proper way of doing it. That's how I do it, because the communion never kills anybody. <laughs> Trust me, it's not lethal, it's life giving. Ying and die, because you have drunk from all of you all. Trust me, you can get fatter and fatter, and you have to die more and more. If that will dust to you. You see where I am? Because I drink it out, look how I am. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, we have graciously accepted us. The living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, your fellowship, spiritual food, and the sacrament of God in God. From the sign to the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. To Christ our Lord. Amen. I know many of you feel that when the bishop comes, they keep you all long. I can't avoid part. That's one of the beauty of having the bishop around. You get a long service. I'm not going home, you know. I have to another service at 4 o'clock in Shrewsbury with our Latina church. I have to meet you at the vestry at 3 o'clock and the service is at 4. So while you're going home and having a nap, I'm on the road. <laughs> that, mean, that doesn't mean that that's why I'm keeping you long. It's to let you know that I love to do what I'm doing. And I love it. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit rests upon you and your loved ones, and even upon those who may not love you, today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Oh, peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The joy of it. Thanks be to God. Holy Spirit. I think our quartet leaving a postlude also. It just if you want to stay, of course. <laughs> but they're, they're
Joe. 